feel taller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gassy? In the mouth. Is that what you call words when they come out of your mouth? <laughs> nah, that's a queef. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the channel. Oh, you know, you yeah, know what this you channel know what's is called. Going on. It's I good. have twins and a toddler, and I didn't have time to eat lunch. Yep. So there you go. It's uh, a ASMR time. Anyways, uh, today we're doing a movie review. Oh goodness gracious! I wasn't ready for that. Hurry, Rick. We're all discombobulated today. And the computer's way down there because we're in different yeah, chairs. Yeah, wow. Today. Oh, I, need my it's glasses. healing top of the world. Uh, but we altitude sickness. Highly, highly anticipated and requested. Yep. Uh, Dawn of yep, nineteen seventy-eight. Which original which backwards is nod. <laughs> Uh, the 1978 Dawn. The original. Uh, the original starring Amitak Bakchan. Not to be confused with... Na -na 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 You're forgetting things. Yeah. No, it's the chair. When my hiney is in a different place, <laughs> my brain follows. <laughs> Your head is actually... What do you want to do? Going... Slouch? Yes. <laughs> I'll fix it next <laughs> week. <laughs> fix it in post. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, we're all over yeah, the place, over the place. But anyways, yeah. this is going to be a hundred friends for movie. Yeah. Every You've single, seen it. Everyone every, on Earth. Every us. Indian has seen this film. It's true. Uh, even some non-Indians. Yeah. Um, but uh, obviously, this was actually the Patreon Hindi request of this month. Uh, and I know why they did it. Yeah. Uh, because we will be watching the next Shavro Khan 1 and then Dawn 2. Two. And we do know that there's a third Dawn in the works mm -hmm. uh, for Han Akhtar's how we know working on the script but obviously we said we will do this in subsequent order so here it is but obviously we're going to watch the original first so we can get an appreciation for what they do in the whatever I don't know I haven't seen it yet um, but 100 Friends World Review so if you haven't watched it we saw it on Z5 currently so you can go watch it there Rick your initial thoughts of Dawn of um, Time Dawn of Time uh I, I don't know how to put this into words. Okay. So it it's almost like, so if somebody today made that, let's say that film had just been made as is. In and released Today. Everything, any problem. 2022. Okay. Okay, so let's say that movie was made today, to be yeah. made to look like an older film. It would be the greatest spoof of the seventy of the sixties and seventies films of all time, mm. and that's for me why I love this movie. Well, I think I I really enjoyed this film I, as well. I enjoyed and I every th minute. I think, and maybe who knows if it was the original purpose? I can't tell you. I don't think. I think. I think it was trying, which makes it even better. Not all the time. I they think, <laughs> I think for the most part, they were being sincere action sequences. No, but I, th I, I think for the most part, it was trying to be a, a, like a sincere mob film. Well, I'm, I don't know. Not don't, Godfather. Yeah, I don't know for sure. But like I a, think this is. I mean, I'm glad you like it though. Yeah, I did. Uh, I so, I I really like it. And I think you have to go into the uh, assumption just in the same way that I really appreciate Shah Rukh Khan films of the '90s. Even though they have yeah. immense flaws, but if you buy into the '90s feel and nostalgia, exactly, I think you're going to enjoy it, yeah. right? Yeah, and not look at it with a critical hat. No, right? no, you can't. Same thing with this. If you go in and you appreciate the '70s, well, even, even <sighs> though this feels more like '50s or '60s, it feels in ten years. It feels like it's a ten year younger, I mean, uh, older film. Like, it feels like it's from '60. But if you buy into like, okay, this is going to be really cheesy at times it's gonna be <laughs> ridiculous but this was bollywood commercial films at the time and i think they they pulled it off and i and i really appreciate it, it was like a a mix of there was elements of like old sean connery bond right oh Ele so much like old elements, school sean connery bond. but in the action scenes it was more batman 
Adam West. Yep. Which I was waiting to hear. <laughs> that was the, especially at the end. Um, my wife was like, "The only thing we're missing is the kerbow." Yeah. Because <laughs> my wife, <laughs> the was graveyard like, fight yeah. scene. We'll talk about. My that. My wife was a huge uh, old school Batman fan. Yeah. Obviously, her and her dad watched it growing up, and so it was elements of that, uh, and you saw some elements of like dramatic, like Devar a little bit, a uh, little in, bit in in, in there, interspurting. But honestly, this surprised me even a bunch. And I, if you read this, I, I don't. I, I know you've all seen this, so it's it's not giving anything away. But it even says, a Don dies, and the D, DSP is the only one who knows yeah, about they shouldn't his death. Say that. I was like, that gives away way, way too, too much. Because I was like, in the beginning, I was like, okay, this is just gonna be a. He's a cool gangster. And right. And it's like turns into, oh, he's playing a double role. Well, when here. he died, <laughs> when he died, I said to Indrani, I said, oh, he's gonna have a twin. <laughs> But it's not. Yeah. It's just a really good <laughs> doppelganger. Uh, and there's so much in this film that it's like if you can't think about this film critic like and not not critically, but like in terms of like there's a lot of illogical stuff that goes on. And it's very different than say like a film you liked and I didn't like, which is Amar Akbar Anthony. Even though I feel like you didn't appreciate that one. Like I know, and you I should have. Like you did this one. Here, that's how that one. Here's the been. here's the difference. You know, this maintained classic. itself in a singular thread versus that one was all over the place. Hard disagree, but okay. Well, yeah, that, that's fine. <laughs> but hey, same blood color, so we have that. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> same blood color. But yeah, let's just get into it. Uh, and if, I don't even know where to start with this because it's not like our normal reviews where we're like, okay, let's break down the acting, break no. down. This is more just breaking down the feel of the film. Let, I guess let's just go with, let's start with the things that we liked yeah. the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The real, well, let's start with what we didn't like because I have a feeling there's not a lot you didn't like, like me. Because I can be critical of a bunch. Oh, there's yeah. a lot of flaws. Obviously, it's nonstop flaws. Well, that's why I'm like, I. But it's hard to be like a put your critical hat on for a film like this. Just like it is truly for, me, for like an Amir Akbar Anthony. I'm like, I just. Did or like I, you said, DDLJ. Yeah. Did I enjoy this film? Yep. Yes, I enjoyed this film. Ugh. I can't break it down in terms of like, oh, this is the greatest Amitabh Bakshan uh, performance. This is the this is the best drama i've ever it's just no, like you i gotta just, take that hat off in terms of just like in terms of like rrr i and very different i'm not i'm not comparing the films i'm not no, of course but, but in the same way i'm like i enjoyed the hell out of R. I wouldn't be one of my best theater experiences i've ever had in my life agreed and so you can ju if you're judging that film critically you're gonna find a lot more flaws than as opposed to um, like somebody in my film club, when when we reviewed it, they said, "If you don't like this film, I'm sorry, you hate fun." Right. Uh, it's true. Different, obviously, very different film. <laughs> very, very different. But <laughs> very different. It's very similar in terms of it being the the kind of film, like like exactly. I said this 15, 20 minutes in. I I, I said to Andrani, I said, "Okay, this feels like some of the original Sean Connery films mm -hmm. that are taking themselves seriously, mm -hmm. but they're ridiculous." Yeah. And I, they didn't have the technology, all right? That kind of stuff. No, and they would try to do stuff, and <laughs> to, like there was one point where Big B punched somebody, and you could have driven a car through the space between his hand and the face, yeah. and it was it was okay. Can I tell you one of my favorite moments? Yeah, he's surrounded. <laughs> There's like twenty other guys there, <laughs> and he's looking for an out. What does he do? <laughs> a ginormous backflip. <laughs> Up onto the hill. It was amazing. Up onto the hill. And then we've got they to go to like the graveyard. They did it 10 times. But the fact that the cripple <laughs> is now this is superhuman. Now, and he goes back to cripple. At the end, he goes back to have a live. <laughs> And it might look like we're oh. we're just laughing hysterically, no, it's but I, so I feel good. like it was so like that's part of the enjoyment of yes. of this film is the is the ridiculousness, and obviously at the time, obviously I can't. It's hard to put your brain at the time and be like, oh, that's amazing, that's so new, that's so different, right? right. Uh, of what they did, a, a, a film can take on a new life of its own in terms of uh, as, as right. time, goes, time by. goes by. Yep. Uh, and so that stuff really added to the enjoyment of it. And actually, I thought for the film, I thought the pacing was actually really good for a commercial film. Like, they yeah. kept it moving. It never got boring. Yeah, it wasn't like they focused too much on the dramatic moment. Nope. It was like something happened. All right, we're going to do this. And the next scene, that thing was happening. And so they really kept it going. And I, I appreciated that. I did, too. And I think if you are a film lover for the art form, right, 
where you have to simultaneously take the hat off and not be critical of it on an artistic level. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you can so appreciate the... I don't know that there's another film that has more zoom ins and zoom outs ever <laughs> in the history of cinematography. Never. Oh my goodness! And the scoring. I don't care that it was overscored. It it it's and that it was theme, the time, man. That it was, was the time. That was in the same in the same way that you go back and you watch Batman from the Batman series. You yeah. go back and you watch Wonder Woman. Which, by the way, who needs Wonder Woman when you've got Xenot on Am Amon? What she was doing in the graveyard. I straight up said that. I said, who needs Wonder Woman when you've got her? <laughs> She and was, the throwing of the yeah. book. Whee! It was, Whee! It was the whistle. Yeah. And then she was just handing out karate chops. Oh, and what chop? front hand springs and back hand springs. And they were all so talented. Doing a side dive, taking four guys out at once. And it made me actually appreciate, remember that new Ranveer film? And I don't know if it was like just an homage, just an old commercial Bollywood films. is just that at the end, shit hits the fan. Right. Logic goes Everything out. Was crazy. Logic goes out the window. Yeah, kind of similar to what happened in the new Ranveer film. Like at the end of it, yep. it, it, it was just like ridiculous. This goes crazy. Kind of fight scene. You know? yep. It's like I don't wonder if they were kind of paying homage to stuff that happened in old school Bollywood. Because man, did it step up a notch there at the graveyard scene? <laughs> the graveyard scene is absolutely spectacular. And then before it was before or after that the the tightrope. <laughs> Oh, greatest green screen I've ever with seen. With <laughs> incredible visual effects. And I loved, because he's walking with the kids. And I said, oh, yeah, he's he's got this. He's a tightrope walker. And they're cutting the thing, right? And I said, okay, how's he going to get out of this? I said, where's Big B? Big B's got to save those kids. And they cut the thing, and it falls, and he's still hanging on. Um, I was dying. Did, didn't lose the kids. No, of didn't, course not. Uh, also, you could have just... Instead of doing the tightrope, which was a perfect lasso, uh, you yeah. could have just let the rope down and climbed down with the kids. Like yeah, you did. of course you could. And I, how about the fact that when Big B earlier in the film is climbing that rope hand over hand, right? <laughs> and he gets to the top and there she, she comes right over the top and she goes, uh, and she starts saying what she's going to say and she's cutting the rope. And then when he falls right into the pool, just... <laughs> Perfect landing it's, right into the pool. It's really nice that there was a pool there. Oh, it just worked out so well. It, it, but in this film, uh, and, and that's all the stuff we like, we really enjoyed. And like I said, some people are going to take us laughing as the fact that we're mocking. We're not mocking. Not like, at all. I, I really, really enjoyed this film. Yes. Uh, and I uh, for for what it is, obviously, <laughs> I can take my critic cap off when I need to, and I could put it on when I need to. This is one of the times that you just. It's just, you judge the style of films based off how they made you feel. Did they entertain you? Correct. That was that was their purpose. Right. Is entertainment. Yep. Uh, not the not we're gonna make the most logical gangster film. No, <laughs> as surely as you do that for him, we've mentioned this before. If you watch a Bruce Lee movie, you're not you're not going in for the artistry. You're not going in for great acting. You're going in to watch incredible action sequences, and even some of those aren't gonna be really really great the the martial arts are going to be really really great and this isn't the only thing created in the 70s and even the 60s that felt this way mm -hmm. it, it like that's why i said it's almost like if this was made today it would be the greatest spoof homage to the films of the day because they basically did everything that was popular that is now corny mm -hmm. they did yeah. in the day we might have not thought it was corny any more than if you saw someone wearing his bell bottoms today you'd go bro what is that? Whereas back then it was, dude, doesn't he look so cool? And I thought they actually had quite a few good action scenes, especially with like the car chase scenes. Uh, and, oh, and the one car chase scene was like, I was like, if the you beginning did before he died. Yeah, I said if you did this, if they stretch this out for the day, like the car chase scene to end all car chase scenes, or like the one that really began car chase scenes, is from Stephen Queen's movie Bullet. In the first like two minutes of that film, there's a ten minute car chase scene that took three weeks to film Jeez. loaded with flaws like one moment he's got a dent in the side the next moment he doesn't one moment a, a hubcap's gone the next moment it's not because they shot it over three weeks but it was groundbreaking for its car chase and that car chase scene was pretty darn good yeah it was and i and I'll, i will say this about big b's performance i thought he did a, a, a really good job especially dramatic obviously yeah he kept dramatic we know strength. big b is great obviously oh, yeah. he's one of the legends if not the legend of yeah. Indie Cinema, right? Obviously, I know there's more. I'm not saying he's in. Whatever. Uh, 
But um, like in the beginning, and then when he transferred, I was like, "That's a different character." Like you could, you yeah. saw clear differences. And also, is there a particular voice that I've heard ten thousand Indians do when they're when they're a pan eating character? It's always the same voice. It sure seems to be I, that way. I think way. I feel like I've heard VJ Raz make that voice. It's like, I don't know. Yeah. I know they're holding it in, but it's it and all I'm sounds like sure, the same voice. I'm pretty sure Amir Khan did it as PK. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it maybe it just sounds because they have pawn in their mouth, but I was like, it sounds like they're all doing the same kind yeah. of character. And and hey, for talk about doing your own stunt work. The bouncing, I mean, he did his fight scenes, but the bouncing around and the diving and the leaping and the rolling that he had to do was pretty great. Yeah. This, uh, in this film, like I said, caught me off guard multiple times. I did not expect Don to die. No. That, like, because I didn't, I didn't read, obviously, what the synopsis Thankfully. was. Thankful. Take that off of IMDb. Yeah, really, for, you're ruining for it for, for anybody the that gets two the... people that haven't seen it. <laughs> 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 um, but, like, I was like, oh. He's not dead. Right. He's not actually dead. Right. And then I was like, is he's this really a, dead. Is this a twin? Right. Is this, what, why is, the, what's going on? Here? Yeah. And there were multiple times where it caught me off guard to what direction they decided to go next. Yeah, everything was from like, that to, ah, you thought that was the real diary? Oh, <laughs> well, I've got the real diary. <laughs> there were also some great moments um like i wrote in my notes one of my favorite lines it should be a shirt he, he says <laughs> it's the scene with so by the way those musical numbers now make sense mm -hmm. right so now we understand why he wasn't because when we saw the helen number we're like dude big b why are you not giving in to helen's enchantments and then later on why he was doing so you get to understand those things but there's got to be a shirt with Big B on it from Don that has this quote because he says this to Helen at one point when he's telling her he's not interested. He says, I'm not interested in a girl's mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a great line. And then I also, I wrote this too. I don't think I've ever seen, okay, so the the real dad, the tightrope walker yes. with the white belt in yeah, every yeah, scene. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a faster transition for a guy who doesn't need money to a guy who desperately needs money. It was 60 seconds. He went, I'm not doing that. I don't mind living the way I live. Your wife's going to die and you can't pay for it. Where's that guy who was trying to get me to work for him? It was like perfectly instant. Instant desperation. Just add water and stir. Yeah, it was... Um... <clears throat> Sorry, still eating. <laughs> it was a, um, a film that... that... Definitely didn't like leave a lot to the audience to no. kind of figure out. Nothing. But not like that. once again, the I think, and I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. The main point in making this film was to entertain people, and it works. And it works. Uh, obviously, they did a very good job. It was a lot of fun. All the songs were great, mm -hmm. and we had I think we had reacted to at least two. Obviously, the pot the the. The one with the yeah, iconic the, one. Where the he iconic was one and Helen we had seen Helen's prior. We, we had seen before. Yeah. And then now I think there was... Actually, for almost a three-hour film, there was only there was, was it four songs in this? I think it was maybe four. Yeah. That's low, actually. That's, very, that's, that's, for, that's pretty for low for For an old Bollywood film uh, in almost three hours, normally there's like six to ten. The other thing that's shocked me, because mm. it feels so much older. Like, interestingly, Andrani and I had watched... Bef just la the night before we watched this last night because I finished this this morning uh, we she had never seen Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf mm. which is uh, if you've never seen that please watch it Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor as well as George Siegel and I forget the, forget the other woman's actress all four were nominated for Oscars El Elizabeth Taylor won it's an Edward Albee play it's a legendary amazing film but that was 1966 mm -hmm. okay I had to look up the year on this because I thought I it 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 looked and felt like the seventies, but it also felt ten years older than that. Yeah. Cholet is five years prior. Really, this is a this film was three years after Cholet, but Cholet feels like it's the newer film to me. This feels older than Cholet as far as just the look, the feel. It might just be because it's more campy. It's the campiness, and it's also Cholet is very. It's a even it's, though there's some camp like, in, in Cholet. There is, but it's mostly like this Western feel. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's, this really gives you the time of 
with with clothing style, with interior design. It, uh, I just, it's the, it's the, I just, I, I really don't have a word to describe the movie and how much I liked it. Because if this was on TV, I would, like if I had nothing to do on a rainy oh, I'd day, and, watch it again. and I just, it happened to be on, I would be elated that it was on. Because I, everything from the zoom-ins to the score, to I thought she was absolutely, for a movie that got so much silliness going on, I felt like she really stayed grounded and weighted in her overall objective and her character's arc. Like, And a lot of questions I had got answered for me. Like at one point, I'm thinking to myself, so what's going to be Big B's motivation as the twin to do this? Why would he risk his life to do it? And they answered the question. Yeah. <laughs> and then for her, okay, you're in his hospital room. Kill him. Yeah. <laughs> why aren't you going to kill him? And the minute I asked the question, she says out of her own mouth, I want him to know why he's dying. <laughs> so every time I had a question that was like, this is so dumb, the writer went, I'm way ahead of you, man. It's I'm not gonna, dumb. I'm going to tell you why. I'll tell you why it's I'll not tell dumb. You why. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, and so um <clears throat> thoroughly pleased. Uh, yeah, me at the too. Fact, and I'm, I think I have a soft spot for old Big B films because uh, I, I, there's not one I haven't liked yet. Uh, yeah, and, that's true. And they're all so different, but they, because they're, they're kind of. I think I like them a lot because they allow me, especially older films. I often take my critic hat off mm. a lot more than I do current films. Right. And so I'm like. I usually just judge them. I'm like, did I enjoy that film? I did enjoy that film. Right. It was it was a lot of fun. I really yeah. it's I I it's, my favorite is it's still probably Cholet. Cholet is great. Yeah. I love Cholet. But Amir Akbar Anthony is just I had I had way too much fun in Amir Akbar Anthony. Of, I was laughing my ass off. Of in Amir the Akbar classics Anthony. for me. But am I missing one? Because we had Divar, and Don, Cholet, and then Amir Akbar Anthony. Is there another one that I'm missing? Of his cl- of his older oh, ones. Of oh, his older seen. classics. Anand. 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 Well, oh my goodness. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, it's that's like, a great one. In terms of critic, but, if critically acclaimed, that one. That is. But, but that's a, more, he's it's supporting a, as well. He's supporting and it's a bit more, as fun and funny it is, as it is, it's not campy. Mm-hmm. That's not a campy movie. Uh, for me, like, if someone were to say to me, what, what movie would you recommend that is like the campiest and most iconic, you'd probably lean Amar Akbar Anthony more than Dawn. I lean Dawn. Well, if you want, if you want, if you want strict comedy, I would go Amir Akbar Anthony. Right. If you want to laugh your ass off, it's just how stupid it is, and I love it. Uh, if you want like more old school Bond with campiness, that's why. I, that's why there. for me, I I love. The, and, I really and love this, this one has some great action that that Amir Akbar Anthony, uh, great action for the time. That's what I'm saying. It is uh, for the time, and I'm really interested in what they do so, with Shabu Khan. I couldn't stop thinking about that while I was watching it. I was like, okay, and I think what I, are they going to do with this? I think the first Dawn is more of a I don't know how strict, but a more strict remake of this Dawn. But is it strict, not just in the story and plot line, but is it strict, does it, and we don't need to know this because the uh-huh. film's going to tell us, so don't say. No, no. I, I'm i wondering how much campy quirky is kept but, versus... But it's going to be 2000s campy quirky. I know. So it's going to be its own Its thing. own identity, its yeah, own DNA. It, but then I feel, in, I, I think they said in Dawn 2, it really takes on a life of its own. Because it's original material now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it also does, I, don't tell me, I wonder if Big B makes an appearance. I hope he does. I, I would hope he does. Like I maybe would hope he could be the cameo. DS or the, D, the, the inspector guy. Something. Or, or, or even just one of the cops. I think that'd be really cool. That's another thing is so fun to watch these actors who clearly have never been trained with firearms or with anything (laughs) remotely close to law enforcement. It's so fun to watch them. Like they're walking in front of each other with their guns and they're some of the creativity in the, like the fight scene with the sticks when he is so (laughs) confident. Yeah. And he's got the guy in the hold and he's talking to him and he's got him across. He's like, yeah, see if you can get out of this. <laughs> I thought it was so good. And then the fact, and when they were all being transferred to a different place. Oh, and, yeah. Um, the fight. And Big in the B was trying to truck. antagonize him. And he was like, he's trying to antagonize him. Don't do it. And, and then and B, Big B antagonizes him. And then he does it. <laughs> and then the guys in the front are so distracted. They run into a brick wall. Yeah. Oh. I love, it's one of my favorite old tropes is the brick wall. Yeah. Big B punches <laughs> a big, a brick a wall. A brick wall. And it. Balls. Yeah, it's amazing. I love. That's one of my favorite old tropes of any great. films. I love when people fall through big walls. <laughs> like, so I was like, that's it's so good. It's dumb, but it's fun. Yep. <laughs> what? Why we believed it back in the day? I don't know, but we did. Uh, <sighs> I think it's more because films were strict. They didn't have like 
artistic. Like people went to the theater to be entertained. Yeah, normally, and especially that, in India. Yeah. Especially, I mean, I'm, that was the case in America. But in the '70s, in American cinema, you had a very real thread that had began, ironically, with the film I had just watched with *Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf*. From Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, you get into this stuff that the Academy started to recognize, like Midnight Cowboy, and then One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and Taxi Driver, and The Godfather. And so it became this real long string of succession of films that were profoundly serious. And we're, we're, we're really, at this point now, 20 years removed from Streetcar Named Desire, fully immersed into reality and method acting in the 70s. You had people who loved that, like Big B, but they were creating entertainers. Yeah. So they were mixing that sense of seriousness with just straight up, we're going to give you something that makes you have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm not really going to go over stuff I didn't like because it would be... So little. I, I, also, it's also like, it'd be like, oh, that fight scene, was, I clearly didn't put... It's like, I can't... Because I enjoyed that stuff. I enjoyed the me fact too. that it was bad. I didn't. In times. It, that didn't bother me uh, because I felt like it was. I, I don't even need to yeah, it's go like, on about I, it. It's I, like why there's no films like, like this. I, I I I find it hard to critique certain things that I also really enjoyed. Those things that I that I would be critiquing. Yeah, and I've gotten. I hope. I think I've gotten better. And you've done a really good job of preparing me because Corbin will let me know. Okay, when we watch this, this is where you need your head to be. Because I have often went in with an expectation and a hope based on my elevative artistry hat yeah. that can blind me to other aspects. And so I, th I feel like I've gotten better. Also, I, I just told him it was a commercial masala film. Yeah, that's, that's all, all I, I needed that's all, to know. That's all I said. So I, I don't tell him like It there's... won't surprise me on second pass. At some point, I'll watch Amar, Amar Akbar Anthony again. Mm. And I'll go in with the mindset of, think about this the way you did Don. Yeah. And I'll probably enjoy it in a second view. So, so fun. So, so stupid, that film. Anyways, uh, well, the next film we will be watching is Shah Rukh Khan's Dawn. Yep. That is, that is what, we, what we got to do. I told you, we're watching him subsequently. Mm -hmm. So we, you will get Dawn, and then you will get Dawn 2 after that. Yep. But after that, which will be our next classic Big B film. Uh, we only have 100 to get to. That's it. Uh, so please let us know what that should be down below. Down below.